Hello and welcome to this week's 7 Days of Science. This week, the news is a little different. Thanks for that intro, Doug. Well, as you can tell, it's still me, Ollie, here doing 7 Days of Science, as Ben and Doug are still in South Africa, now digging up fossils in the Karoo. As far as I have found, none of Ben's predictions made last week have come true yet, but there's probably some obscure paper somewhere that I've accidentally missed. Anyway, things that have actually happened this week. Two interesting stories coming out of the USA this week. Let's start with the discoveries made in Utah. Two new species of stenophores were discovered, and this week they have finally been described in a paper. Stenorhabdotus campaneliformis and Thalassus staphylos elegnus are the first two stenophore fossils to be found in the USA. Stenophores are very similar to Cnidaria, which are what jellyfish are, but the main big difference is that jellyfish show radial symmetry, but stenophores have bradial symmetry, along with many other smaller differences. They were discovered in the Marjum Formation in the House Mountain Range and date back to the Cambrian period. It's remarkable that these soft-bodied organisms have been fossilised, but the Marjum Formation is famous for its soft-bodied fossils, just like the Burgess Shea. The interesting thing about these stenophores is that they have a very well-preserved nervous system and show a rather complex one, which when compared to many living stenophores shows us that they actually lost this through evolution, as most modern-day ones have very diffuse, more simple nervous systems. Next up, we go across state lines to neighbouring Wyoming for our next news. Three new species of archaic ungulates have been described, dating from just after the late Cretaceous, 66 to 63 million years ago, right after the mass extinction. Minocotus genanine, Conocodon hatingeri, and Bionis honii are all members of the family Peritychidae. The reason these archaic ungulates are so interesting is that they suggest that early mammals became much more diverse much quicker than first thought after the KT extinction. The three new species were discovered when scientists went to study teeth and jawbones of 29 condylarth individuals with the aim of distinguishing between them. Over 420 individual mammal fossils have been found at the site, so these 29 were just some of what could be discovered. Bionis honeyi was differentiated as the largest species, being about the size of a cat. Conocodon hatingeri was thought to be the same as an already discovered species of Conocodon, but was differentiated due to a difference in the morphology of its molars. And Miniconus giannine is the same size as most other condyloths, but was distinguished by a small cusp on its molars called a parastulid. Essentially, it also has a different enough molar morphology to be thought of as a different species. Finally, we come onto our comedy section for today. Ben sent me this paper to look at, and I have to say it was rather entertaining to read. Proving that dinosaurs are distant ancestors of humans, the East Asian locus of events that disproves definitively the out of Africa theory. I encourage you to go read this paper if you want a good laugh, but I think the best way to talk about this paper is to start with my favourite part. According to this paper, the circulation of lizard people conspiracy theories on the internet and the prevalence of the duck face selfie are key indicators of a subconscious link to our dinosaur ancestors. There are a lot more hilarious bits, but the main argument is that large dinosaurs in East Asia Asia and Australasia survived the mass extinction because they were very far away from the asteroid impact, and that they evolved into modern mammals. For example, apparently horses are descended from hadrosaurs. Now the main evidence used in this paper to support the claim is that there are clear similarities in bone and skull composition between many different dinosaurs and many mammals. For example, duckbill platypus are clearly a transitional species between hadrosaurs and mammals, because they have duckbills. I think the main thing this paper forgets is convergent evolution. I really do encourage you to go read this, it's quite short but there's just too much to unpack here. I think perhaps the final thing I'll say about it is that three out of the five references used in the paper are other papers the author wrote himself. So yeah, I'm not a paleontologist, but even I'm pretty sure we didn't descend from dinosaurs, and that the use of duck face in selfies is not an unconscious behavioural link to some sort of duck-billed hadrosaur ancestor. Honestly, I kind of think this is satire, but I can't quite tell. Thank you, Ollie. Some fascinating news indeed. And now back to our newest addition to 7 Days of Science, Alex, with this week's education news. Thank you, Doug. This week, lots of schools have decided to stand up. Thank you, Alex. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.